Welcome back to the Coffee with Candle show. We're gonna be talking about YouTube analytics. If you want to have a successful YouTube channel, you have to fall in love with data. I really believe that. What gets measured gets improved. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 analytics that I look at once a video has been published so I can understand how it performed and how I can make data-driven decisions so that my next video is hopefully my best video and I can get more views, more subscribers, and even earn more money because I'm paying attention to the data. You got to just press record. So let's get straight into it. What you do is you go into your YouTube studio in the back end. And one of the ways you can get to a specific video is just do a search. I'm going to look up a video called amazing home office design ideas. When you search it, you can click the little analytics graphic right here, and it takes you straight to the video analytics. This video, we're going to be talking about 10 analytics that we look out on a specific video. And number one is how does this video compare to my typical video performance? You can see this in a couple ways. Right here on screen, you can see this little gray line. And the gray line is how the video typically performs. And if I hover on that, that's how the video typically performs. The blue line is showing that this video is outperforming the typical performance. Additionally, it gives you a green arrow right here and a green arrow here on views and watch time to say that this video is getting 62,000 views than more since published so far. And on watch time, and you can click that to get another graph, you can click through these tabs right here, it also is up. So this video is crushing. So that's the first question I ask, like how is this video doing compared to a typical video? Now, this video was doing well kind of from the start, but I've noticed a trend that videos are breaking out. Sometimes it takes a month, 30 days, sometimes 45 days, 60 days. And so what's been interesting is you have to have patience, do the right things, good titles, good thumbnails, good content. And sometimes it takes a while for a video to break out. The second question is, is this video gaining or losing subscribers? In this case, this one video has grown the Think Media channel by 759 subscribers so far. A lot of times, sometimes going live, sometimes pointing out a video that doesn't really resonate with your audience might actually have a minus subscribers there. You wanna pay attention to that. And sometimes you still may be okay with it because after over time, it might lose subscribers at first, eventually gain them later, but you should be paying attention. How's this content resonating with my current subscribers? Number three, what are the key moments for audience retention. Now, this is a very powerful graph that actually shows where the content is maybe losing attention. If it's holding attention, it shows you spikes. Notice this, it says two spikes. So these two spikes right here are uh, probably people scrolling through because what this video ultimately is, is a compilation of three different office tours. It's my office tour. And by the way, if you're looking for some home office upgrades and you're looking for kind of how we do our home offices, you've got my office, you've got Heather Torres on the Think Media team's office, and then you have Omar's office. So maybe someone starts watching, they kind of get bored, they skip to the next one. And there's also chapters so people can find their way and skip through. The, one of the big things here is, again, key moments for audience retention. And I'm asking myself, hey, on my next video, how can I potentially do better? And what can I learn? Average percentage viewed matters. Uh, if you can get over 50% of the people finishing the vi a video, that can be a great thing. Or if you can crack seven, eight, nine minutes, that also can be very powerful. You know, this is a 30 minute video, so it's a much longer video and it is being massively recommended by the YouTube algorithm right now. So um, it is definitely performing well. Number four is how is the video performing in real time views? On the right side of the screen here, we're now looking at real time views every two days. This video is getting around 4,365 videos. And in the last 60 minutes, this video has gotten 98 views. We're on the right side of the screen over here. I'll go full screen and zoom in so you can see it maybe a little better. And so on the right side, real-time views. Browse features is the top traffic source. That means that this video is being shown on the homepage. A little bit of YouTube search, a little bit of external, a little bit of suggested, but browse is really the main traffic source. So when this video shows up on people's home pages. The thumbnail is very clickable. The topic is maybe interesting. And so long as it gets clicked on and then people spend seven minutes of their time on average watching this video, the video continues to be recommended. And so um, super powerful. Now we're going to get into the next few tips in a second, but today's Coffee with Cannell episode is brought to you by our brand new 
limited time think master class this is a updated class that's only available for a limited time and i'm actually going to be going into how i use one simple youtube strategy to turn 130 dollars into over 19,323 dollars with a single youtube video link in the description down below if you want to register uh, i haven't really shared this anywhere in this depth and if you like these 10 tips on analytics i'm going to be specifically going super deep on how to earn money from youtube not with youtube AdSense. I'm going to show you how I spent $130, what I did after that when it comes to YouTube and creating a video, and exactly how that investment generated $19,323. It's going to be super fun. And so if you want to register for that, link in the description down below. And let's keep going with our YouTube analytics tips. Number five is what are the traffic sources? So now up top here, you've, we're on the overview page of a single video. And in a future video, we'll talk about channel analytics, reviewing your analytics for the last 30 days, 90 days. We're just reviewing 10 anal analytics of one upload about 40 days after the video came out. So now I want to know, this is the overview page. I'm going to click on reach here. This is going to give me some new data. The next question I'm asking, number five, is what are the traffic sources? So as I scroll down, there's this really important graph right here. What are the traffic sources? And we discovered that browse features, 73% of the views are coming from browse features. If I hover over this little eye, it tells me what the traffic source is. And so this traffic source is homepage, home screen views, also subscription feed and other browsing features. So great. So this video is really generating from traffic sources. Furthermore, on this right side here, it's actually really powerful to see impressions and how they led to watch time. 76% of these impressions have come from YouTube recommending my content. Now, how do you influence that? It says you can increase the chance of YouTube suggesting your content by increasing your click-through rate and your view video watch time. So click-through rate is a little low, 2.7. But the average view duration, the video watch time, is seven minutes and 21 seconds. So YouTube is like, man, that's that's a lot of time on platform. We're going to recommend this video. So I like to check my traffic sources. I like to see where impressions are coming from. And I like to look at the click-through rate. Now, back up top here on the reach tab of a single video inside of my analytics, I'm clicking on impressions click-through rate. And you can actually see as the video has been released day after day, what kind of uh, click-through rate has it been getting? And it's been 2.8, 3.1. You know, a good click-through rate is over 10%. If you can get over 15 or 16% and hold that, you basically have a viral video on your hands. Now, this might be a niche topic a little bit with home office design ideas, maybe the length that's kind of intimidating to click on a 30-minute video. So really, if your click-through rate is high and your average view duration is high, then you're going to have a banger on your on your hands. You're going to hack the YouTube algorithm and blow it up. If one of those two things is high, you're also going to blow it up. So that's what I like to uh, definitely see. What's the click-through rate? What can I learn from next time? I think the thumbnail is pretty phenomenal. I think that the title is also very good. But the topic may not have been as widely interesting to our subscribers. And here's the interesting thing. Like if you got, if you got a breakout video like this blue line right here that looks like it's not going to stop, I mean live with it. Like, that's great. Uh, but always asking, man, how can I make that higher? And in, in my opinion, topic would be probably the biggest influence of that, not necessarily title and thumbnail, because I think both of those are strong. Number seven, I'm going to ask, what's the average view duration? Now we've asked that, but we're going to go to the next tab over that's engagement. And we have our total watch time hours, uh, 10,800 watch time hours. And I want to encourage you, naturally, this was released on a large channel that already had big influence. It took a long time to build that influence. Um, you know, you got to start before you're ready, start messy, start posting videos and build your channel one subscriber at a time. But I think this also shows the power of even just one video. If you want to get monetized, get a thousand subscribers, get 4,000 hours of watch time. This one video has accomplished that result. And it's also 30 minutes long. So remember, you're always one video away from potentially reaching your next YouTube goal. And uh, if you put out the right video at the right time with the right title and the right thumbnail with the right content, then you can see incredible things happen. So next though, I wanna ask about average view duration. This is a huge metric. Like the two big levers are click-through rate and average view duration. 
This one has three minutes and 31 minute, uh, seconds more than usual as far as the performance. And you actually can see the gray line here of my typical performance on the Think Media YouTube channel is around three minutes and 53 seconds to about you know four minutes and 30 seconds. And then the pink line is how this video is performing and how much time people spend watching this video. So again, this is the metric. If you're curious, man, how do I hack the algorithm? This is the metric on this video that led to the result. People are spending seven minutes and 37 seconds of their hard won time hanging out on this video, not watching The Expanse on Amazon Prime, not watching Queen's Gambit on Netflix, seven minutes and 37 seconds. And, and, and that's average view duration. Some of course are spending longer and that's holding the average viewer that clicks on this video is spending that much time. So huge metric that you want to think about. How do I increase that? And let's get to number eight. So now we're going to click audience and this one's not talked about a lot. But this one is the average views per viewer. See, it says it right here, the average views per viewer. So the average views per viewer is the average number of times a viewer watched this particular video in this period. So the question I'm asking is how many videos does the average viewer watch? This is just off this video. This is one that I want to increase and that can really help your channel. What does it mean? It means that if somebody clicks on one of your videos, do they watch a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth? Do they stay on your channel and watch 10 videos? If you can increase that average views per viewer number, it really can be a game changer. In this case, people barely watch too. And if they find this video, maybe their mindset, maybe suggested, maybe getting distracted, maybe ending their viewing session, they're not necessarily binging a whole bunch of different videos. A way to see how this really works well would be like one of my favorite YouTube channels called Daily Dose of the Internet. They have a couple smart things going for them. One, their YouTube videos are very short, three, four minutes. Two, they really pull fair use content from a lot of places and they consolidate like really entertaining clips. Three, they're kind of just pleasant, entertaining, low mental fatigue, watchable videos. But also because they're short, I'll oftentimes play one on my smart TV when we're making dinner or something and then suggest it to me as a second, third, fourth, or fifth because maybe it takes 25 minutes to prepare dinner. So we watch like five or six of them and they're just super entertaining. It plays me old ones because it comes out daily. So I wouldn't be surprised if their average view per viewer is like five views or 10 or, or a lot more. So to me, that is, are you creating content that somebody could watch one video, love it, and then want to do a bingeable session on your channel? Be like, that was awesome. And they want to watch another one. In some cases, Think Media creates searchable content, one problem, one answer type of content, and the viewing session might end. But whatever possible, if you can create kind of bingeable viewing sessions, that can be super powerful. And that is a metric that I like to look at. If you're getting value, smash like, we're gonna get into the last three tips here. Number nine is what is my CPM? So we can see now we're gonna click the revenue tab. We're studying one video. And we're going through these 10 questions I like to ask about every video. What's my click-through rate? What's my average view duration? What are the traffic sources? How are the real times views doing? Now we're talking about money. So what is the CPM? So the CPM of this video is $23.64. Now this isn't remarkable because if you want to make money from YouTube ads, you know, a lot of times the average CPM is one to five dollars on YouTube. So this means uh, how much you're gonna make. CPM stands for cost per mill, and mill or milli is a Roman term for a thousand. And it means that if ads play, you're gonna make 2364. Now, a huge misconception though, is that is not how much money you actually keep. Um, that is the total amount of money earned by the video, but YouTube takes 45% of that and you keep 55% of that. Your RPM is a much more accurate number. That's is exactly how much money you earn. This number also could be pushed up because of super chats, which you'll act, which could be a lot if you were doing, if you're getting super chats or, uh, people that are kind of tipping you cause they're grateful for your content. This essentially, essentially tells me that every a thousand monetized views, and, and what do I mean by monetize? Well, maybe an ad doesn't play. Maybe somebody has an ad blocker. It actually, the ad has to be plain and seen. You could scroll down and see that uh, skippable ads are the main source, a little bit of bump, bumper ads and a few other things, but the main ones, the, the bumper ads and the skippable ads. But all that to say is number nine, what is my CPM? And number 10, what is my RPM? I like to know how much money is a video earning, not just how much has it earned so far. This video is generated at the time of recording this, $881.60. 
But how much money is this compared to maybe another video on my channel? And the way you influence this, it has a lot to do with topic and audience. Uh, what country is your audience watching in? How old is your audience? And what is your audience's mindset? Is it a professional audience? Is it business owners, real estate investors, venture capitalists, entrepreneurs, small business owners, the creator economy? Like, what is it? Or is it like kids that want to, you know, 14 year olds that want to watch cat videos? It can affect how much advertisers are willing to pay to get in front of your audience. Secondly, though, it's really topic. So, home office design ideas, talking about maybe tech, home office versus a pranks channel or maybe a gaming video or something else. This is these are the types of things that cover that affect your CPM and therefore your RPM. So in certain cases, you may want to create videos about strategic types of topics. Some of the highest CPM niches are things like real estate, investing, personal finance. Uh, tech is kind of in the middle. It's not one of the high ones. Medical, a lot of medicine, uh, doctors, uh, biohackers, health tips. That can be a high CPM niche. And then you experiment over time and you wanna of course stay on brand, stay in your niche, but the selection of what niche you have on YouTube could be influenced by your ambitions when it comes to earning money from your YouTube channel. And also the one-off topics. For Think Media, we help people with the best tips and tools for building their influence with online video. This is obviously the gear and tech side. How do you build out your home office and your battle station? Um, and we've noticed that sometimes when you talk about money, it usually drives your CPM up. If it was like how to make money on YouTube, that might be a little bit higher. And then maybe something else that is just something about software, although software is, is pretty high as well. And so um, all of that are really good questions to ask. And when I'm asking that, I'm also curious, how much money has this video generated? You know, to look at one other video on the channel, there is uh, this video right here, how to get, this was actually a live stream but it's how to get 1,000 subscribers fast on the Think Media channel. And you can actually see the power of one video. This video has generated almost a million views, 25,000 new subscribers, $16,591. And we can see the, the CPM was $33. And again, the RPM is usually about half that, $17.76. So not only is it higher, but then you multiply that by the views over time. And that's a pretty good amount of money earned from just this one video. So if you have, uh, if you got value out of this video, hit the like button. And I want to remind you that today's coffee with Cannell is brought to you by our brand new, uh, exclusive web class where I'm going to be breaking down how I use one simple YouTube strategy to turn $130 into over 19,323 with a single video. Now I'm actually not really talking about AdSense. We just showed you CPM and RPM. This is not that. This is actually other monetization strategies connected to some smart YouTube strategy. You're going to love it. Uh, if you want to watch this, it's where I go a little bit deeper. Uh, it's an hour long free class. Link in the description down below, or you can just go to thinkmasterclass.com to be a part of the training and go to that website to register 